All right, so, so I have a few slides to, to give a, a status report on, on Psyche Hub. Um, so a, a quick recap, recap first. So Python users over the time has, has gone uh, quite a long, a long way. Oh, you're not? Not sharing, actually. Should be sharing now. Yeah. Can you see the slides? Yeah? OK. Right, so, so Python has, has gone so, some way be, uh, from, from very simple scripting tasks quite a few years ago to more daily tasks and now actually as, as a whole analysis framework. And uh, there's a bit on, of, of a two-tailed world in, on, on the other hand, uh, with the one, one side kind of physics, which is root-based, so root for almost everything, starting from I.O. to two, two quiz for, for plotting, modeling, and so on, fitting statistics, even machine learning with MBA, of course. And then on the other side, there's the scientific computing uh, with Python, and how you have the whole family, starting with the SciPy and NumPy. So uh, I'm not going to go through, through all the names, but these are pretty, pretty well known. And on top of those, you do have projects for, uh, for other fields, such as astrophysics or, or, or biomedical. Uh, so AstroPy and, and BioPython are two, two quite uh, well-known ones. So this is a start of a strongly link uh, these days with scientific community computing community in the sense that we would like to exploit, and we have been exploiting, in fact, some of these packages already. But we also need ways to bridge between Root and the Python the scientific ecosystem and more, and the scope, and we need a generalized effort to avoid, well, to go above a certain threshold, otherwise these things t tend to die if it's only in, in, inside a, well, if it's a one-person pro project, typically. Or, uh, on the other hand, I'll also say, at least my opinion, we, we rather need a tool set rather than a, a toolkit. In, and this is something that, that is reflected in the way this project evolves, for sure. So from LHB, I can give you a key example. I, I said I mentioned already a bunch of uh, packages. We can see a few packages here, either the standard ones, even in C++, and also on the, on the Python side. And there's quite a lot of it, be, being it for data manipulation, machine learning, uh, usage, plotting, fitting, statistics, even other things that have to be done in, in analysis, uh, uh, workflow, such as reweighting of distributions to match data, uh, air pro propagation uh, calculations as well. There's a lot of packages there, but not, it's not always trivial to navigate between these and profit them from all of them in a, in a, in a nice, e easy way, quick way as well. So this is a bit the, 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 the reasons why, why there's a, a gap to, to be filled. So the idea of the Psyche Hair project in one sentence is the community-driven and community-oriented project, just reading it initially, with the aim of providing particle physics at large with a Python package containing core and, uh, and common tools and functionality. So this is by all means not a replacement for root, uh, not a replacement for the Python ecosystem based on NumPy and scikit learn and so on, but what it really is is an analytic Python tool set uh, uh, that kind of normalizes the, the APIs and so on, and tries to, to, so tries to emulate a bit what scikit learn has, has done for machine learning with a unified inter interface and also trying to to, to profit uh, as much as possible in a good way, uh, third-party part, packages. And this is what TransferPy calls uh, affiliated packages. And we do, we do call them uh, exactly the same way as we see in a few slides. But there's a, some bridge and gluing to be done between the root-based ecosystem and the Python ec ec scientific ecosystem, as I, as I mentioned. But uh, and this is part of the, of the project as well. And another point, community was already mentioned. So we do need to build a community engaging with future collaborators collaborators and in various experiments to be, again, uh, above threshold to avoid d dying off. So there's also a, a nice feature of this is by, by building this community, you actually improve also as well the discoverability of the relevant tools rather than, than sitting on, on the private GitHub repositories in particular. So the Scikit-Hub project is built on top of, uh, say, five pillars or five grand topics that more or less touch everything that you would need to do an analysis, and that goes from, uh, from data sets, which are pretty standard, like a, a, a root tree, uh, to aggregation of histograms, for example, and then you have to do model meeting, you have to visualize all these things, you also have to simulate data to do all kinds of similar manipulations, as you would do on, on data itself, and so on. So this is, this is more or less all the topics that are, that are touched in, in a very general uh, way. So nowadays, the, 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 the package structure of the Saki Hair project uh, there's a very few things that you can see here on the GitHub repository. Uh, at the very top, you have Psyche Hub, which is, I'll come back to that, of course, is, is the core package if you want. And then you have, by now, uh, uh, four affiliated packages that come along and bring uh, extra functionality. Some of them are quite, uh, quite peculiar, 
right? Well, peculiar because they, they, they solve something special that might require spe special, uh, well, they might have de special defenses and so on. This is certainly the case for, for Hydra that will be discussed in the next presentations. And then you have some other uh, pages that have been around for much longer than cycling here for, for that matter, such as root numpy and also root pandas. The other two, PyJet and NumPit here, are, are more uh, are newer, certainly. So I mentioned about this, this thing, but great. In, in, two, in two words, this is the difference between the affiliated package and the, and the core guy there. So the core package versus the affiliated ones, the, the core one really provides, again, a core functionality, and see the next slide for a few examples, and it also tries to, to do this, well, to bring this unified interface that you have mentioned at the beginning. And it does build as well on top of affiliated packages for providing bridges where relevant and also using some of the functionality there. It doesn't mean that you cannot use the affiliated packages by themselves, they have a life of their own, but, uh, but, it, but you, might, you might want to, to use some of the, some of the, uh, the bridges and, and conversions that are, in, in, that are more naturally uh, given to you in, in the core package because it can talk to, to everything basically. Uh, now, so for the affiliated packages, this is, as I mentioned, a concept for taken from AstroPy. So it doesn't have to be part of the core, but it, it does build on top of it, and, and of course it relates to it. So uh, it, it, I mentioned also, I think, by now, that it does bring some functionality specific to certain topics uh, that are not necessarily of the widest community interest, just because not everybody would be using a GPUs, for example, or not everybody would be using a uh, we'll be doing, I don't know, uh, amplitude analysis, comp complex ones that might require specific software. So you, you don't want to, to the user to have, to, to have all of that in, in one go uh, if you want to have a minimalistic. So it's a bit the, the difference between a mini conda and a con installation, for example. Okay, so the core package, uh, it's not an exhaustive list, but largely there's these kind of modules or, or topics by themselves. So that's data tests, data sets, the aggregation, the modeling, the visualization, simulation that I have already mentioned, these are the, the, the big pillars. And then on top of that, uh, or next to it, you have a, a few other helpers or other things uh, containing units, constants, also mathematical uh, of expressions, functions, um, classes, such as uh, classes for geometry vectors, Lorentz vectors and stuff like that. Probably some statistics tools that should come. In fact, that, that's pretty much empty, that one. So what I wanted to mention here is that some of the models are much more advanced than others. In fact, so some of them are pretty much ready for, for a, a first release, certainly, whereas other ones are, are, uh, are lacking behind, not least because they are more complicated. Uh, for example, the aggregation where we would like to use a, a histogram, this is, this is still a subject that it hasn't been touched to, too much, but this is something that needs to be done in the future. But some other modules there, uh, as I mentioned, are ready to be used. So, so this, I'll, I'll mention more about the releases in, uh, towards the end of the presentation. Okay, so in terms of related packages, I mentioned that there's four by now, so that's root numpy and root pandas. These guys, they, they do the, the conversions and interfaces between root and numpy or, or pandas data frames. So these were, are well known and they have, they have their own uh, uh, community already and users. And then on, there's also numpythia that does the interface between pythia and, and numpy. Uh, these are newer guys, and also PyJet does the same thing, but connecting to fast jets for, for jet finding algorithm and so on. So, uh, so this, in fact, uh, there will be a presentation in a, a bit more than a month from now by Newell on, on these two packages uh, alone. So plan or worth trying to get. So I, I mentioned already that the histogramming functionality in, in the core is is lacking behind. So this is. This, we had this since a long time. In fact, Jim, Jim, I believe from the very beginning, he mentioned it would be quite, probably quite nice to have uh, histogram as a, as, a, as, a, as a different way of, of dealing with histograms, meaning a, a more functional programming way. So this is something that we, we should discuss very, very soon. And then there's also kinds of other packages that would be interesting to have in some way, either affiliated or just connecting to it, or just, uh, just a, as a dependency uh, that these in particular are very much used in LHV, such as HyperML that has a bunch of machine learning uh, tools uh, for reweighting and much more, even as plotting as well, and in fact, the independent thing you boot. And there's a some, other, some other ones, are of course, the uh, Hydra related packages that I mentioned, but there will be two presentations, I'm not going to say any more about that, and that's for sure much more we can think of, but I didn't want, there's no point in missing uh, in me trying to be comprehensive here. So some, some of the achievements so far, so some of the things have been done, so, so this is, uh, as mentioned since from the beginning, this is a, a community a driven and oriented project. So there is uh, community bonding work is actually time and, and effort consuming and this, uh, this has take, taken some, some time and it, you know, but it, things are getting there and this, so far 
the, the feedback has, has been positive there. But this is something that has to be continued all, all the way. We do have by now various contact persons in various experiments. Uh, so not only uh, LHC, but some other ones, uh, even Dune and, and Bell too. Uh, some of these people have been active in, which is a very good thing, in, in, in some of the, of the modules and packages. Uh, we do have a site with project ideas. This is uh, unfortunately uh, not updated because there's a few things that happened uh, recently, but this will be updated quite soon. Uh, and if you have uh, ideas, you're more than welcome then to, to put them and to post them or, or, or bring them uh, through the mailing list. I'll come back to that in a second as well. The circuit head package has numerous modules that, uh, that are mostly ready for release, uh, as I mentioned, and some of the other affiliated packages are quite mature uh, as well. So we are approaching some at a time where we can actually use for certain things. We had a Google Summer of Code project over summer with Abu, so this is the third presentation of today's meeting, so I'll, I won't say anything more. So these were some of, some of, some of the things that have taken the, the, the time mostly. Okay, in terms of planning, and I'm almost, almost done, uh, next steps, I will be finalize a few bits and pieces to make the code feel as uniform as possible in a few places. There's, a, I would say there's a, this is a, quite important to have a few examples on, on simple tasks, typical tasks that the user would, would like to to uh, to do, to perform, but using psyche have instead of bidding on, on all kinds of things. So to, to, if you want to go to people and people start to use it, then really need to lower the threshold to users. And that means typically providing examples that you can you can follow and you can adapt. If you don't do that, then it's, it, the threshold is always seen to be higher and you have always have a tendency to, to start to continue with what you have, even if it's not better. Uh, the test suite has to, uh, bring, to be brought uh, to speed because there were quite a few developments that uh, that didn't have a, a test suite there. But that's uh, okay. It's not it's difficult, but that, that has to be uh, finalized as soon as possible. And then uh, we're going to test the distribution of this within LHB as a guinea pig, just because it's, well, some of us are LHB, so it's, it's easier, and we know the rest of the environment. And I actually have a, a person in at C at CERN uh, willing to help us with that. Uh, there will be a development release target for the end of, the, of next month, also end of October. And then, as I mentioned already several times, we, we need to continue engaging with the community at large, not just in terms of project presentations, but going beyond that, which is, starts to be more interesting than which is uh, uh, more uh, hands-on uh, oriented, so tutorial, basically. In terms of releases, I mentioned the, the development, what I would like to call development release in October, and by the end of the, of the year, we will have the first this kind of more proper uh, release with some other things that should be uh, should be there on, on, by the end of this year. So to, to finalize, uh, the links are there for the GitHub and the repository itself, which, which uh, contains documentation. And in terms of main list, this is also recent. There's two, t two, two main lists. The first one is admin. So if you want to touch, get in touch with the, with the we decided the team and you don't want to send it to everybody, you can contact us directly there. So these are the, fact, the five, the seven people, sorry, that, uh, that are on the, on, the, on the core team. And then the forum that will hopefully will become more active was just uh, uh, created uh, recently, last week. Uh, this is a forum for, for anybody, open to anybody, can, can just post anything. Uh, so hopefully this will be useful for all kinds of adverts uh, and uh, also to discuss things. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it, thank you. And uh, okay, since I changed, uh, uh, to know if we only two here at CERN, so I'm not going to ask uh, if Augusto has any question. But question. Uh, maybe I don't know how many people are con connected from outside. So if you have any questions, please just shout. Maybe before we move to to discussion with Hyder. Hello? We can't hear anybody. Yeah, you are connected. Oh, okay. 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 I was, I was scared that, it, that uh, we got disconnected, but uh, who, who was that? I didn't get it. Are there any questions? Otherwise, I'll, otherwise I'll move forward with the, with the presentation from Augusto. Okay. okay can move forward. All right, thanks.
say hello, can you hear me? I think my, my, my slides are not showing up. Can you see, can you see the slide uh, uh, completely? Is Your slides are not there. They can, ah, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, they're getting shared. So, okay, let me, let me go ahead. Okay, this is a very quick presentation just to provide you with some, with the status of the Hydra uh, before Jipan Shu present uh, the, the, the result, the outcome of our Google Sum of Code project, which is Hydra uh, bindings for Python. So let me go ahead. Okay, for the people that is not familiar with Hydra, uh, Hydra is a head-only library uh, designed to, to perform common tests found in high-energy physics, data analysis, using massively parallel platforms. Uh, this is implemented on top of the, uh, the STL and the, the first, a variadic version of the first. Uh, Hydra runs on Linux uh, and it use uh, OpenMP, CUDA and the TBB enabled devices. So uh, these are the main uh, design features of the library. Uh, the library use uh, largely uh, static polymorphism. This provides a, a set of optimized containers that can store multidimensional data sets efficiently using a uh, structure of the arrays uh, layout. Uh, there is a very strong separation between algorithms and data, and the data uh, is almost completely handled using iterators, and the all classes manage the resources uh, using Ray AI. So uh, the library is tight and thread safe, uh, and the, the, the objects handled by the, the interfaces are deeply uh, inspected. And uh, so uh, it's very difficult, for example, to generate code that should crash on compiler time due to type mismatch or stack overflows or things like that. So basically, if you are using Hydra in your project, the source files uh, written just with Hydra and the standard C++ can be compiled for GPU and CPU, just exchanging the, the, the extension of the file. You don't need to, 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 to do any code at all. It's not also uh, necessary to, to to write any like raw CUDA, TBB, or OpenMP code, okay? So, uh, the status. Uh, the code that's currently available in the Hydra official uh, repository that is this one here, uh, corresponds to a snapshot of the project uh, state of the uh, about 10 months ago. Uh, the last commit on that was in March of this year, okay? Uh, this release is functional and stable, and the, this uh, like integrates about uh, 51 commits, initial commits of Hydra. But basically, uh, what I did to avoid like a too much shake up in the stable release and in the stable repository was to fork this repository in in another one, and this is where I am like testing and developing and adding new features to Hydra. So uh, the development has been very active in, this, in, in, in the development fork. Uh, this has by now like 366 uh, commits. Uh, and this has a main new uh, algorithms and the uh, uh, major uh, project code re uh, rec structure. So I will comment on that here. So what are the new features? 
Okay, there are now uh, two generic uh, multidimensional containers. Uh, there is a container, it's called multivector. Uh, this is for like, to store multidimensional data with columns with different types. And if the columns have all the same type, you can use a similar container, but solid multi-array. Basically, these both containers uh, store the data uh, using structure of arrays, layout, but when you iterate over these containers, uh, you will find like, uh, like each row is a tuple with the data that is stored there. So it's effect from, from the outside, looks like you just made a vector of tuples. So there are also some uh, helper macros that you can use to, to make your objects to, to, to be stored in these arrays. So you store the state of the object in an optimal way, and you can like, reconvert, recover the, 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 the object after accessing that. This is what is in fact used in the phase space generator, for example, and it provides like, quite fast, quite efficient way to store objects as well. Uh, numerical integration. Uh, numerical integration, we have three, uh, four new algorithms. We have uh, the, no, not four, three. Uh, adaptive and non-adaptive uh, Gauss-Conrad quadrature, uh, which is uh, the most uh, popular algorithm for, to, 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 to perform integration uh, in one dimension. For multidimensional integrals, we have a non-adaptive against Malik quadrature. In a later time, I will report also the adaptive uh, version of this algorithm. These are like quadratures are like the only alternative we really have to access like sud millimesimal uh, precision performing numerical integration. Field space generation, uh, there is a new interface uh, support integration and the evaluation of models in place. So in place means here, like previously, uh, Niemis Buster, for example, in the also stable version of Hydra, you, if you wanted to do things like that, you should generate a sample with the events you want, and after like call, uh, other uh, classes or, or, or functions to evaluate the functors you want to evaluate or, and you, you have to, to also perform the integration algorithm by yourself. Now, it's not necessary to, 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 to allocate memory to create a sample uh, of the events. You just uh, call the, 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 the methods to perform the evaluation or the integration and uh, the events will be generated and consumed uh, in place to, to, to perform your calculation. So this happens with minimal uh, memory uh, uh, traffic and it's very fast as well. Uh, the new uh, interface also supports uh, reweighting and unweight of samples using user-defined functors. This has been like a, a very popular request. Some people around have been asking me all the time to, to port that, so this will be available. Now, if you want to have uh, an awaited sample according to some model, you just pass this model and call the unweight uh, method and you will get a, 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 a sample corresponding to that. No new allocation of memory is necessary in this case because what, what the algorithm will do, we will reorder the events in a way to produce the shape you want. So you can also recycle the same, the same events. You can reorder indefinitely the same events to produce different shapes. This is very uh, useful, for example, in amplitude analysis when you want to, to display the, the shapes of the model you, you, you are like fitting 
but you don't want every time you do that to allocate memory again and again and over again. So one allocation and you can have like as many uh, uh, reweightings or unweighted you want. Uh, there is a new and faster uh, container for events. This container for events uh, is completely compliant with the interface of C++14 for the STL uh, containers. So if you have, for example, Python beans and things like that that works for vectors, you should work automatically for these containers as well. You will find the same things. You can deal with that in the same way. But remember that internally, this container is using like multi-array and multi-vectors to provide like the best uh, uh, way to manage the memory. So they are really very fast. There is a new interface for root uh, minuit. Uh, for a new interface for root minuit too. Uh, <coughs> Previously, it was required to, for example, for the user to register each parameter before to, to pass the functors uh, for the interface. Now it's not necessary anymore. You just create your functors and with the parameters you want, and this will be uh, uh, automatically registered. And you can also ask to print uh, the structure of your model and the, this will print to you a tree showing all the functors you have with the parameters, the, the, the states of that. If you want, you can even like ask the algorithm to print at each iteration of minuit the state of your functors and this will print all the, 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 the values and everything. Uh, you can also now use uh, lambdas functions in feet, in, in host and the device side, which I mean by that is you can, this is one of the examples that will be available. You can effectively like pass as a feed function a lambda function uh, and with the parameters. And so you can give names to these parameters. You can like set these parameters. This will be available. I am concluding also the, the porting of the S-plot uh, class. This will be a new class that takes the result of the feed and provides you with the S-plot corresponding to the, the configuration. Uh, from the point of view of the infrastructure, there are like some significant uh, uh, changes as well, for example, now, uh, in the next version, will be available, uh, uh, all the backends will be available as policies. Uh, these policies correspond uh, to the policies that are available in first library, but they are not the same thing of the first library policies. They, they, they provide some more information, but effectively what can be done is you can instantiate in each container, each algorithm, the policies uh, corresponding to, to, to the back end. You want to run your algorithms or allocate memory, and you can do it in a concurrently and asynchronously way. So you can effectively like, have pieces of your expressions that are evaluated in different uh, back ends in, in, in parallel. So you can parallelize between GPU and CPU, and in the CPU parallelizing over threads, and in the, in the GPU parallelizing over different streams, do things like that. Uh, the project does not depend anymore in an external first library installation. Uh, I started at a certain point to tune some aspects of first to fit better to Hydra, so I decided just to import a, a custom version of the first inside Hydra. This will make it easier for, for the users to install that. I did the same thing for Agen, so you, can, you don't need to, to install these libraries uh, to, to use Hydra. But if you want to use it first, together with Hydra, you can 
is still vast because uh, in the way this is included, there is no risk of collision between uh, the installation you have in your system for first and uh, the Hydra uh, first that is inside Hydra. So a new set of examples that are now uh, distributed in directories uh, by functionality, so user can go and see the functionality you want. And it, the, the last priority, but it's something I would like to provide in the next release, but I don't know if it will be feasible, is uh, a set of uh, measurement, performance measurement uh, routines using non-use in order to, per to perform some comparison in different uh, hardware people have around. So, uh, to, sum to summarize, uh, the merging of the new code in the stable repository is imminent. Uh, this is going to happen about one or two weeks. Uh, depends on the need to finish to address a pair of bugs and to finish some documentation. The new stack will be so put initially in pre-release status and we will uh, to synchronize Hydra Python with that. And after, like, we will release, uh, to provide the, a release uh, of Hydra and Hydra Python from this point and we will probably uh, write down a roadmap and a, a calendar of the fixed date release in order to keep both the libraries uh, uh, synchronized to, to make it easier to the users to, to use that. So that's all. Thanks for your research. Okay, some question? Hi, this is David. I had a, a technical question. Um, typically, doing things like embedding eigen inside your package is, uh, causes problems. Maybe it makes life easier. David, uh, your your audio is failing here. I cannot is understand that, you. Is that better or worse? It's a bit better now. Please. Do okay, it. I can't do too much more. Um, so, embedding. Uh, library like or an external package like Eigen, while it it's better for users, is worse for someone maintaining an experiment software stack. Um, actually, we're in CMS. We're living through exactly this problem that TensorFlow has Eigen inside and doesn't play nice with other people's version of Eigen. Um, how how exactly have you shielded your Eigen from from the, uh, everything else, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I take care to this. This is really a very boring task, actually. But I took care to 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 put all to edit all the the, the files of the first and the again to to put guards like for to put that in a new namespace. That is a, that is visible only for for Hydra. So everything that is uh, like a, from first and again will be in a namespace like Hydra detail external first again something like that. And uh, also uh, there I had coded like the names of the, of of the files. So uh, in the state first is right now, at least the version of first I had in Hydra, I don't see any like a, uh, need in the near future to update that. But if it's necessary to update that, I have a, a separated version that will be maintained in the repository. So can just make a merge. The same thing for Agen. But basically, uh, this guarantees that you can even mix one code with the other without risk of, of collisions. Actually, first does that with kube and with book, which are another two separate uh, uh, libraries that you can use standalone 
but very often inside the first uh, in a slightly modified way. So I think we will not face problems in Hydra with that, because at least in my test I'm not facing that problem. I tested in some computers, in some systems. And uh, of course, right, it would be nice if the people around can, can do that as well. I am surprised that uh, in TensorFlow you can have like this kind of a collision uh, because I would not expect that actually. I think uh, they, they probably could do a better job uh, like uh, hiding the internal implementation. Yeah, they, they haven't unfortunately. Um, anyway, yeah, you might, you might think about how to preserve the ability even if it's not the default to make make it so that someone can use a version of Eigen with some, you know, presumably it has to be newer than some version for you to support it, but uh, it gives people the flexibility and probably reduces your maintenance in the long term. But anyway, just comment. This uh, was something I found there at, at quite, quite, quite longly actually, because I'm tempted to do that science like yeah, some months ago, but I have been pondering and uh, like the, 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 the point is unless that there are really, really very substantial uh, uh, improvements in some implementation details of first or again, that does not break the interface. I think, as I told before, in the near future, it will not be necessary to to like to 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 play with the versions of that. Like, of course, I will be watching for bugs and some bad things. But I mean, it's a compromise because what was happening previously was like any video distributes a version of first that is installed together with all NVIDIA stuff. And uh, uh, this version cannot be used in Hydra, so you had to go to another uh, like GitHub project, download that, clone that, install in some place accessible or visible from from Hydra, and it enable the 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 Nvidia uh, uh, version. And it was just too complex for for some users to do. There was like a all the time complaining. So I started to distribute like first in a like side directory of Hydra. And it just was generating problems because sometimes the people was not like enabling the installation that comes with it, killed up. So doing like that, you just have Hydra there, wherever you have or not first already installed you are not going to face any problem. The same for again. But I see your point about the monetization, yeah. Any more questions before we go, we go to different two? Nothing else? Nothing else? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so different you right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have the sites. Oh, oh actually, do you, you want to share your, your screen? Because if, you, if you're going to show something live as well, it's probably better yeah. to actually share your Yeah? Yeah, I'm sharing mine. Okay, so, that, so that's, I stop sharing mine. Okay. Maybe okay, so I'm actually, yeah. So I'm actually connected with two different nodes. So if I go down with one, I can connect with second. And if any time you lose my voice, just message me. Okay? Okay. Uh, for the moment, you're not, you're not yet sharing, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm sharing. Okay, yeah, so, thanks. Please, please go ahead. So I believe you can... Do you can choose, I actually, just a quick a quick word of presentation. So, uh, so yeah, so Deep and Chu was, was a Google Summer of Code uh, student that Arush and I had over the summer. To work on the on the Python bindings for for Hadda that was just re represented, and uh, there was so we we did 
end the project with the first release, and that's exactly what uh, what Deep Insure is going to detail. So go ahead. Thank you, Deep Insure. Yeah. So thank you for the introduction, Eduardo. So first of all, I am Deep Insure Thakur. Uh, I recently graduated from uh, Rajasthan Technical University, uh, India. And over the past three months, I have worked with uh, my mentors to bind the Hydra library and create a package called Hydra Python. So, uh, G2017 was a learning experience for me under the supervision of Dr. Antonio Augusto Alvarez Jr. and Dr. Eduardo Rodriguez, which both of uh, which you can see both of them sitting in, on their chair. Okay, so the G Top 27 started with the goal to bind the Hydra uh, Hydra library, which is a C++ header only library. And over the span of last three months, we uh, pushed more than 100 commits, and we have a, a G Top release of Hydra Python. So this will be the content of the meeting overview. Main features, I think I can skip that. Uh, okay, so. Hydra is a header only C++ library uh, and to perform some common high energy physics analysis uh, I think Antonio have already briefed, briefed about you all that Okay, the library make use of Thirst Actually not only, not the Thirst but a uh, clone of Thirst which is by Andrew Kerrigan uh, The reason is Thirst do not have support of variadic templates and it can only support at max of 10 elements in a tuple and Andrew Corrigan fixed that problem and it's in his clone so we are using that specific version of Hydra Python you guys can hear me right? yeah yeah that's fine okay 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 so Hydra is implemented on top of C++ STL library and the variadic version of search library the Hydra Python contains Containers are able to describe multi-dimensional data structures allocated in the different memory spaces. So the memory spaces can be on GPU or on the CPU. The basic library used for binding is PyBind11 with some complementary C type. Actually, we had the option of Swig and the Boost Python. But the problem is Swig do not have support of variadic template, which Hydra uses a lot. And Boost Python is enormously large project and various types of tricks are used to make it support for almost any compiler that are in existence so uh, we don't we do not need that much of complexity to bind our hydra so we use a tiny version of pybind11 which is a self which is like a tiny version of boost python okay so hydra python also deploys some templates and macro tricks and work around to ease the binding work make container opaque etc so that you can use them in a more patternic sense okay so first there are various algorithms available in the hydra library but uh, i'm first, uh, first i'm going to show about the phase space learn by the way we are uh, this class is compatible with the new version of the uh, hydra library and if there's something going to break then we will change that and fix that so this will not work with the official multi-threaded uh, or official version of Hydra, but the Antonio Augusto's version of Hydra. Okay. So this Hydra C++ library provides many algorithms, and following the mentor's advice, I focused on the phase space Monte Carlo generation during the duration of summer of course. Okay. So the Hydra is implemented. Hydra's implementation of phase space Monte Carlo generation class can have any number of particles in the final state so whether it's 5 or 50 there can be any number of particles in the final state the python version we have for the hydra can have up to 10 particles in the final state which is easily extendable so now let me tell you why this is because hydra to, uh, to gain some performance benefit and to make it run more fast uh, hydra uses something called curiously recurring template pattern or the static polymorphism and what happens is everything uh, every dynamic things goes down to the compile time and after the compilation uh, we have almost everything that do not require any dynamic uh, stuff so this is why and python is dynamic language so this is why we have currently support of up to 10 particles in the final state but we can easily extend it to any number of particles so if you want to support 15 particles you just need to write one or two line of code 
and it can support 15 functions. Okay, the Python page based class stores the generated decades in the events container. And now let me show you the example of page space. Uh, uh, okay, the page. Uh, sorry. Actually, uh, this icon is not removing, and I want to drag it out. Okay. So the page space example. This is on device. Uh, I'll point out the difference between device and host in a moment. Okay. So this is the basic example of showing the generation of uh, PHSP corresponding to the decay of B0. K by J by PSI in this case. Okay, so what you need to do is import the Hydra Python package. Uh, I imported it as an alias of HYPY. I created a million entries here. The masses are in GeV Giga Electron Volt per T square. So this is the uh, beta zero mass, J PSI K and pi mass. So these are the masses of part, uh, masses. And then I created a particle. Vector four I represent a four vector is a particle. Okay, and this is a matrix array. So now what you need to do is Hydra Python dot page space class. The three here represent for the number of final state particles. So if you want to have seven particles in final state, you just put seven here and that's it. And you pass the matrix here, and it will generate the decade in the event container store it. So I created an event container here. Hydra Python dot device device is this uh, this device which I'll explain in a moment. Then the event container name and then the final particles the the three here and the number of entries here which is one million in this case and simply you run the generate own device and the variables here and what it produces is uh, it will produce a million events. And um, wait a second. Well, sorry, Mr. Go ahead. I I just need the yeah. You can continue. So fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. So here I have printed the two events. The first one, the, this is a tuple of two events. The so first tuple and the second tuple. The first tuple have this first element, the mass of the the event weight, the event weight, and rest of three. These three are the particles, final state particles. So remember, we use three particles here, so we will get three. Here. And if we want seven or fifteen, you will get fifteen or seven final state particles. And I have printed only two here, so these are the particles. In the tuple of first element, which you can see there, the first element of tuple describes the event weight. This is the event weight, and the rep three of the tuple describes the four vector or the final state particle, which is vector four r is Python. This one, one, two, and the third tuple. Now, remember, I used this device, and now I am going to use this host. I'll again saying that I'll clear both of these device and host in a moment. So I imported the package as before, created some variables, blah blah blah, and finally, here is the difference. Earlier we used device event, and now I am using the host event. And earlier we used generate on device, and now we are using the host event. So basically, the host in native terms can be defined as a single CPU, while the device. Are the multiple CPUs okay? So if you use only host here, this will make use of one CPU regardless of the number of processors in your system. And if you use the device here, it will use all your CPUs. Okay? So on line number 11 and 12, I just change the word device to host, and it will work with all the devices or and host. And and this is the uh, these are the two variables, and you can see. The output is exactly same on the host as in the device. Okay. So, device versus host. The device uses all the CPUs which you can see a bump here. Okay. And the host is using only single one CPU. This one, the blue. And the performance difference. The device, uh, for 10 million events, 
the device run for 1.9 seconds and it generated 10 million events while on host we have 4.23 seconds then when then the benchmarking is done on the intel core i5 5200u cpu okay so uh, let me just show you that this is uh, let me open the i python Okay, so this is the package, the variable theme that I showed in the slide. And this is the event for the device and generate on device. And now if I will run this, you will see something. I have run this. And can you see this bump here? It makes use all of all the CPUs and the events are generated so now I can easily do for I in range of print event D and this is the output. The, the mask, the weight of the event and the vector for our particles. And for this uh, second one and since I have generated 10 million events and uh, it, it's not possible for me to show all the 10 minutes here. And now if I use the events here the host where is the host the host event here and generate on host and this will run for a bit and it generated and you will see a single cpu bump here the red one here can you see here this red one okay so now uh, now is uh, the thing is you can use this package with the famous Jupyter notebook so actually let me just show uh, I'm sharing this link with you copy link address Oh, wait a second. Okay, so you can see the link here and just click on this and you will see this notebook appear here and you can run this import hydra python import it successfully this is the random example which i'll explain in a moment and random and it's working fine so as you can see here and this is the example of page space and the time it on done okay so let me just first continue with the slide and then okay so now another example uh, earlier i have showed you this page space example and now we have this hydra random which have binding for which for a python so sampling a 3d gaussian distribution here this is a simple example we imported math the hydra python with the alias hypy created a function which implements the gauss 3d which expects expect some argument and calculate the Gaussian of on those arguments. Now, this is the container. The host, host is again the host or device. Vector, source is the particle, uh, is a container again with three particles. And this is the number of uh, the samples that will be generated. This is a container. We created the Hydra, Hydra Python random object here and we simply sample it. Pass the container, some the values range and the gauss 3d function this 3d function and this will uh, generate a, a output something like this okay so in this example the host backend is cpp one thing to note here is this will work for the host only and if you want to pass some custom functions you need to create the compiled version of 
Python function which you can do with the help of Numba. So with the help of Numba, you can compile a uh, function, Python function, pass the address here and then this will work with the device as well. So it will make use of all your processes. So this is the output and in summary. The project included with the first official release of 0.1.0 of Hydra Python. The test cases, documentation and examples have been prepared together with the development of binding. I have decided to continue with the project outside the scope of GSOC. So we, uh, so we are now working outside the scope of GSOC. GSOC is over but the project isn't so we are continuing with it. You all are invited to contribute to the project. The link is in the PDF, the slide. Check out the documentation, join our Gitter channel and the GSOC 2017 project report on. This is the, uh, this is the documentation. I accidentally click on that. So this is the documentation here. The documentation of the classes. So vector 4R, vector 4R class available in Python lab, PC plus vector 4R class. And again, the GSOC 2017 report. Join our Gitter channel, which is here. So you can join us and contribute in helping. And one more thing. So let me show you. So this is an example of basic usage of page space, which is from the Augusto Hydra Library, page space, page space to basic. And this contains uh, 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 270 lines of code. And now, this is the Python version of that. This is the Python version which will produce the exactly same output and it's very easy to code in python so let me just run this basic and so yeah here it is then uh, uh, uh can score basic so the code that was in uh, 270 lines is now summed up in only 67 lines with some custom print messages and port and device port okay and yeah i think that's it from my side so do you have any questions thanks very much Dipenshu. okay thank you okay we certainly don't have any questions from from the same side i would like <laughs> so if there are any questions from our side please yes yeah, so you all can get the link in the slide itself so all links are in this slide. Yeah. Does anyone have a question or curiosity? Just to clarify, the long-term thinking is to presumably combine this repository and the Hydra repository into one package. It's actually quite nice. This is, uh... This is a, a, I would say, there is a very, a very high probability that this will happen because it also make it easier uh, to us to maintain uh, the project. Another possibility is somehow to merge the codes uh, to have, like uh, for each class, the corresponding code and associate, uh, like in some, like put inside the, 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 using some macro mechanism or something like that together with the class, the C++ class, or some accessory code for each header, some mechanism like that we can keep the things uh, synchronized more, more easily. Like we are trying to do that when I organized the first release of Hydra. Uh, synchronize the, the things and so probably we will discuss and get some decision into merge or not the repositories. You also depend a bit on user feedback as usual. Uh, yeah. My, yeah. My pre preferences. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, it, for me, from the point of view of the maintainer, makes sense to have like everything in one repository or like it, to, to, to make the code as close as possible. 
but we we have to this is quite it's quite new we have to to to, to also to get some feedback people using that to see how how the things will will go or well, we'll have a master script that does the installation for you in one go but they could still be separate so you know, plenty of, plenty of possibilities but but the the ultimate goal is to make it easy for the user essentially to, to lower the threshold yeah. right, because it's not methods in the The, 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 we could not find any way to make uh, the binging generating process automatic. The first thing we considered was to use SUE or to at least some version of that, even PyRoot. But PyRoot relies a lot in, in, like, in reflection. You have to add some information to get the refraction and also to use to compile the code for HTML and things like that. SWIG does not support as Dipanshu told templates uh, with more than one or two parameters. Like it. So at the end, we decided to go with PyBind 11 because we can. It's quite easy actually to to to, to write uh, the bindings uh, because it's only C++. But this also uh, creates the, the the need to every time we update the the, the the interface of Hydra to reveal the interface of the binding. So like this transfer. Uh, the, 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 the manutation uh, like activities for the Hydra somehow also to the BD. Any, any questions or, or comments? By the words, I think it's, it's been a good hour for the meeting. Yeah, we like it basically an hour. If there's anything else, then, then thank you very much and, and talk to you. See you some at, some at some next meeting. Bye bye then. <laughs>